So today we're gonna um, work with Tracy. Now, you know, you guys know Malik already, right? So Malik gives us a picture today of him like this. You know, he's a big fan and he's got his cool looks. And he's very serious. So we got this picture and um, what we wanted to do was trace it and show you how to trace and, and use pastels eventually. So what I did was I laid this on a light table and what I did was then was traced it on this paper right here it's traced on here and then I put it on a cleaner sheet of white paper to then make a copy so I can draw the copy now I keep this so I can make my corrections or adjust it as far as light and dark but um, and you know also Malik traced this one by holding this picture up to the light and he's got the shape and realistically a lot of artists instead of spending time doing a grid they will trace it right on on a projector, blow it up, and do all those things, the modern tools that we have to help us get somewhere in a short span of time. So that's one of the things we do when it comes to tracing. And that's it for tracing. We've traced our picture, or however we've got it together, and it's on a piece of paper ready to draw. So we also kept a copy of the original drawing. Not only that, we keep the trace copy around if we want to make it again or try it or just to go back if we lose the shape so sometimes the shape gets lost and remember we have something on the table so we won't mess the table up which this is old paper that was going to be thrown away and we're using these pastels and what's cool about them you can I don't really have a certain pattern some people will work on an eye at a time I just got to get in there and, and it's the way I calm myself so art for me is very naturally therapeutic and if you don't know what that means it's something that makes you feel good. Um, so what I'm going to do is start looking at his face. I covered his face up. You see me? Sometimes I'm fidgety, but as I start drawing, it all calms down. Now, so Malik's got those look through your eyes. I'm going to start with his face in the center, and I'm going to pick out colors that look like his skin tone. This brown here, this darker brown here, this medium brown. So, and he's got kind of an orange red lip. I'm going to go for that, and then we've got some way to lighten him. And I always put blue in my faces because I don't know why, but I like this, the grays to be blue. So I'm going to concentrate on his face. And I know that everybody's eyes are not stark white. I'm going to use this blue and go into the eye a little bit. And I'm going to start drawing. So since we started with his eye, I put a little blue in here to keep him. When the colors start blending in there, not I'm not coloring the whole eye blue, but I'm just going to put a little blue in there and rub it out. So it's just not so nakedly blue. And then I can use maybe this peach color right here and give it like make it feel like its eyes so they don't feel flat, naked white. And since the eyes are so sensitive, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this reddish brown. And pick up that nice color in there. Wow, it looks like I'm looking back at Malik. He's staring right through me. I wonder what he's thinking right now. So I'm going to go ahead with his eyes. And now if you notice he has a hat, so the hat makes him have a shadow. So if this is kind of his skin tone right here, and if I just color the whole face like that, now I'm rubbing kind of lightly so I can kind of just kind of find a pattern in the, in the shape. So by going around and creating, maybe I'll just draw this first half of his face, this color, and and it's not real heavy yet. I'm just trying to see if this color works for me. And I still want to see the line underneath. So I'm going to try to do half of the face and then move to the other half of the face. And I think today I'm feeling this urge to just give this whole face a solid lay down, even the neck right here, of this, this kind of brown. This brown is not his skin tone totally, but it's working for us right now. Now you notice. I'm drawing this kind of lightly, but I'm making sure it's even. So I'm going to come back over here. So you can still see now, you, if you notice, you can still see all of his lines underneath from the copy. Now I can come under here and do the lip. But what I'm going to do next is get this darker color and come up here and look under his eyes and see and under his hat and see where this darker color comes in. 
and blend it in some more. It, you see, under the mustache. under over his eye and right here if you look on this copy actually it's nicer to look at the actual person and draw them and watch the light move but if they sit still long enough you can get it but some people cannot sit still that long and it takes us a minute now really what I want you to do is look at the way the light moves around his face he's not a line he's a he's a mess of a shape with light and color moving around the shape of his face and even this lip right here which and under the lip that's where every every place that is not flat has a shadow and so that's where the light forms around the 3d surfaces the surfaces that are not flat now right now it kind of looks like a mass but I'm gonna find another color so we've so far we use this dark brown this medium brown and now this light brown. I'm gonna use that to kind of blend these together. And so, so far I haven't rubbed anything with my fingers, I haven't put no real light on it. I'm putting some of this on here, medium brown to kind of blend. And I think I'm gonna start using maybe a finger in a minute or see what we get here. So I'm gonna, so when I say use my finger, I use it Oh, napkin or paper towel, toilet tissue, any kind of surface. And I'm going to come around here and rub the face and get these things to blend. Now, depending on what pastels you have, they all act different. This one right here, it seems like it's got a nice little, um, that blends together, kind of, you see the shadow somewhat. And you can still see layers underneath. And you can almost rub all of this away if you want to. And I think right now, I'm just going to do it just to get me a foundational layer of everything. And I'm going to come back now. Wow. So the pastels have this ability to do this. Just rub all of them off. Well, in, like that. So right now, I'm just going to go with that since we have this underneath here, surface. And I'm going to stop for a minute and look at it and think, what do I want to do next? And this is how your mind strategizes. You just look at this picture and look at that picture and see what do you want. Well, I can see right now it's kind of light under the neck and around here. The lip, can this red right here is probably too red or maybe it's too orange. So I have to try another color. They shift so easy. But this red I want right here, just a little more red in here and I can see how I blend so I'm gonna just blend that bottom part of it wow look how cool that looks and actually I think while I'm doing that I'm gonna find this a little bit white in here get that eye going so you can see that emotion in there it's a very emotional picture I can put some of this highlight white where I see the nose and under the eye right here and the lip right here this white as a lightener, it gets lighter. And then I'm going to come over here and now I think I'm going I'm to try this. This color right here to go for this darker shadow and kind of pick up that around this nose and around the chin. See, this is, this is the brown that's not as dark, but it's getting there. And we're gonna come under here. Now, I'm gonna rub it a little bit, not so it disappears like we did last time, but I just wanna keep that rich brown in there. And now I'm gonna, so, so I had, first I was using this, then I'm using that medium brown. Now I'm gonna go back to the darker brown. So we right now it's gonna give his face some more drama or dark, like light so you see that his face is not flat so his nose so the way the way the hat is over his face the way the bottom of his lip has shadow the way the neck is being held by the chin or is under the chin 
and under the hat look at all those nice little shades I guess we're throwing shade right now so <laughs> I'm going to wow look at that shadow it's feeling cool look like it look like he's under something now I'm gonna take my finger this time I'm using my just my finger not even because I feel feel closer to this face I feel like this this is my friend I see watch him merge up on his page right here and let me see what can I do now this is my own thing I don't know why but right here to, to separate some of this brown from brown this blue to me look at that blue it just sparks the face up comes along the edge here and it just helps you see the differentiation and then the shades in here uh, right there now if I just rub it in a little bit I think I'm gonna leave that alone right now and I'm gonna come with a little bit of black now black once you put it on there, it can kill everything if you do too much but I'm gonna get those strong eyebrows in there the eyelash you gotta turn turn your chalk sideways some to get them eyelashes now look if you if you don't do anything remember the top of the eyelash is always darker than the bottom and like right here the eyebrow you can squiggle it on a little bit and it feels like I'm looking at Malik because he has those dramatic eyebrows and eyelashes and very um, strong features. Now on here is his whiskers growing in and his chin hair coming around the mountain here, the neck here I mean. Um, now the top lip or the lip right here. We're going to come in here and oh my goodness this is this is feeling nice just for a chance to get fresh with this color. Now remember what I said about black? I'm going to put this away. You stay right there because you know how that stuff does. Now He's got this bait hat on and all that detail scares me. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just going to play with the red eye because I think that red eye and red mouth. Oh, that's not red. That's orange. So I'm still going to make that orange and red blend each other, be friends. So when I come over here, I'm going to pull this orange in here. And if we put nothing else on it, that orange pops. Wow, that looks cool, Malik. How you doing? And I'm going to take this eye right here and put it on there. That red in the eye. I'm going to find... I gotta find a color that maybe this orange. Now look at this little design. Let me see. Is this orange working? That's the closest thing. This kind of it's kind of not like so. I don't wanna. I'm gonna use a right. Yeah, that's cool. It's it's gonna be my version of a bait because I know you guys love your designer clothes, and if I don't get it right, I will hear about it. So I'm gonna put this. color in here a little bit oh yeah there we go and that kind of gives the hat that strong nice see I think that's enough of that right or does it sit anywhere else yeah there we go we're gonna start with that let's see if I can find an already mixed color uh, well we're gonna get a new color I've never been on bait but it's gonna go I'm gonna use this and that wow look at that I can't wait to get this hat somewhere now one more color I'm going to put in there. I'm going to have to go with some blue because I mean this kind of blue right here is making me happy. Okay, I'm going to go right in here. So that's what's cool about using your pastels. You're the creator right now. You may find some things to guide you around but this right here is where creative license just comes in. and You can do whatever you want. Now the front of that hat needs something. I think a gray. So I think this gray I'm going to bring in here, gray, I'm going to put this gray right in here. Remember what I said about that black being so dominant because it takes over. I'm going to, I'm going to wait till I use this. Wow, I think that's kind of cool. So I'm going to put this gray back away. I'm going to look for, now. I'm going to think one more time. What should I do next? Talk to yourself. Ask yourself, what do you want to do next? Now, okay, now I know. I want to do a background next. And I want the background. I want the background. I'm going to show you how I'll just make a background the way I want it. I'm going to put a little bit of glow around it by getting this nice orange. This orange is not in here yet. I'm going to follow the background, follow the shape of this hoodie that's on his head and go around it with this. And the reason why I'm going to do this color, 
I wanted him to have a little glow around there. And I think actually I'm gonna I'm gonna follow that around with some yellow. What I'm calling yellow anyway. And I'm gonna turn the picture upside down and I'm gonna scribble so the colors look like they're moving. See that? And if I had black in the hoodie already, the black will come out here and get inside this color and it'll lose its it'll lose its its nice blend. But I wanted some of that yellow to be picked up. Now let me look at this. Let me see how I'm feeling. So that's kind of that orange yellow. I'm gonna come over here. Now notice this color rubs into the green. There's some green on there. I don't want the green on there. So I'm gonna come over here. Oh, that yellow doesn't look that much different, but I like it. Okay, there's something that happens. Your chalks, they break, right? You gotta pull the paper to get to the nice color. But since this one's already broken, I'm gonna take it and draw from it sideways. And you see how I pick some of that green up? Well, actually, I like the way that green looks on there. So I might have to come back with some green. But we'll see. Because again, while I'm doing it, yeah, I'm gonna have to do it because that green snuck in there. And it wasn't my plan, but I'm adapting to something that changes. So I'm gonna get that pretty green right here. And I think what I'm gonna do is just do it on this side. Streak it in. Streak it in. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of cool. Let me see. Do I want some on that side? Now I think what I'm gonna do is not green on that side. I'm gonna come over here with this color. Let's see. Oh yeah, I like that. Actually, I'm gonna bring some of the over the green so it feels like, yeah. Now, this is the trick when you're gonna do the black hoodie. You wanna make sure you don't get black everywhere. And it'd probably be good to have a piece of extra paper around. I'm gonna turn one of these over. Let me see. No, actually, I'll turn this over. That's actually good paper, but I'll just turn this over on the face so I don't. What I wanna do this for is when I put my hand right here, I won't smear the whole face. It'll be clean. You can just use any paper or anything. And since we're pretty much done with the brown, I'm going to put brown away. Because when I get too much stuff out here, it goes... I'll start grabbing all the wrong colors, moving so fast. And what we want to do is clean up as we go. So these, these might fall on the floor and get stuck into the carpet and stuff. And mom or somebody just might not be happy. So that way they won't fall on the floor. Now, I'm going to go here, over here and find me what looks like a black. And maybe a dark blue. That hoodie has more brown in it, so uh, I don't want brown. I'm gonna just go with that, a purple, 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 purple. See, the way blacks show up on cameras, they mix, have certain ways. Now see, just look what happens. When you're not seeing anything, then you see that color pop at you. It's not, this is the photograph, and this is your drawing. So your drawing should not be exactly this, unless that's what you're going for, but I like the liveliness of this color. So I am going to start with, Instead of going straight black, I'm gonna go with some of this blue and I'm gonna rub it on there again, like by looking and maybe going sideways with it. See how that feels. See, that feels so cool. And I can, I can, where it's a darker edge right here, I can bring it darker and make the edges sharp like this. Bring it around. And then I can come right here like that. And we might not see black on here, but we will. So, and then I can come over here and complete one side first. One complete side with my hand resting on this face. So I don't, like, let me say again, I don't make it real muddy. Now, now it's got these nice little, so here's the black coming in here. Maybe, I'm gonna save you, I'm still gonna wait. Put some purple in here, purple right here. And then right here. So he had hair I missed right here with the black. And then we have the hoodie coming over the hat right there with the black. And I'm gonna bring this around right this like that. And the funny thing about this, once you now this is where it might be nicer to use some of this cool paper and rub it in. 
so the hoodie kind of goes around. Oh man, I think I'm liking this. I'm gonna. Okay, so so if you want it solid black, you can go for solid, but I don't want it solid. I, I want to take advantage of. Oh, I got so excited! I don't know where my black went. Oh, there it is. All these papers, it's rolling everywhere. So back to the drawing. Now this time I'm gonna put it on this side. And because uh, I like the way that black worked before, I'm gonna use it last again. I'm gonna take the blue and go around a sharp edge. Now this line, this line goes over the hoodie to make it kind of stand out more. So I just want you to see that. And I'm gonna bring it back up here again and I'm gonna bring some of that blue up there because the reason why the blue is so strong I blue Malik is a nice person and the colors say he is and the blue is like the spirit of the, the spirit of a person and it's very genuine it's a very loving giving kind of thing and so when you make art art reflects the way you feel about people some colors show what you feel you might not know it but it's just your hands and mind seem to know it now I know before I did the black one way that's that's the blue first but I'm going to rub this a little deeper around here so the hat pops and come on down here with this blue. You see how the line is straight on this time and around the face. It's going to stop right here. And you notice again, I'm just showing you, I'm, I'm going to put this on here so I'm not, I'm not rubbing and smearing everywhere. And I kind of like the way this, these thicker lines feel. And I'm going to take this right here. And go in there where the black was. And before I finish, I'm gonna I'm going to show you something that I like to do. I like to just make this part down here a little lighter. Because since Malik's a good friend and I did a good drawing I like, I'm putting my name on it. And when I put my name on it, that means I like it. So we can come over here. Oops, you see my hands? It has black on them, so. I'm going to contaminate that yellow. Now I can look at it and see what I think. I think I like this strong, bolder blue over here, so I'm going to bring it over here and go stronger and make the colors just feel a little bit more. And I think this blue hoodie says a lot. It says a lot. Because he's, he's in a safe place with a nice hoodie on and a nice color around him. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my name on this one, but I think I'm going to do it with red. And I want not an orange red, but a red that is true. And there it goes. D U A R T E. And this is where we are. Oh, whoop. Let me look at that eye. Now the eye is missing something. It's missing that little bit of shine from the black right here. That emotion. Look at the heaviness in his eyes. I mean, so we're going to stop right there, buddies. And here we are, buddies. This is Malik. <laughs> All finished and bright. Thank you. Malik was our subject today, and when he came in, of all days, he um, had experience at his other, you know, workplace where he hurt his head. And um, it's a dot there. But then um, all that affected the way my first drawing came out. Uh, this is this is the original copy of a photo of him that we used, and um, so the first one when I did the pastel demo, it came out with a little bit more uh, less bright colors. But as I drew more, as I adapted to the atmosphere, um, things changed and got a little bit brighter. And Malik can talk about that one. So I experienced a cut in my face today, right there close to my eye, real close. This is my good eye, by the way, too. <laughs> But good thing that didn't happen, but still, I was still furious about this cut right here on my face. I was thinking at first I don't need stitches or something, but it's not that severe. But I came to work today, still a little bit upset, but I still was here. Did what I had to do. And then I was telling Duart and everybody else about the situation. And then as I'm telling him, you can tell like this is like showing his art, like how dreary it is a little bit. It still got colors popping, but it, you could tell it's lacking like a little bit of brightness. Later on in the day, when I was doing my art, and Duarte was doing his art, 
he decided to do this so that's the second one right here for the video and you can see the difference how bright it is how the colors are popping how compared to this one for the clothing here brighter hat is a little different this is a little jewelry right here and then I got enough courage to like paint the bird that I got and do this Yeah, have a good day. Thank you so much. And stay safe out there. Yes.